what is up great people back again with another video is no sana as some of you guys already know in this video i'm going to be doing an introduction to frame structures of bscn5 uh, that's building and structural construction right so as you can see it's frame structures and this is just an introduction okay so uh if you're new to my channel please care to like comment share and subscribe as i'll be posting more uh, building and structural construction uh, and five content and also n6 you know as time uh, moves right so don't forget to uh, to subscribe and not miss out on anything because uh, this channel is here to help you you know in the areas where you are not understanding uh, your lecturers in your in your college and so forth right so if you are not the one doing civil engineering uh, please uh, just share it even if uh, it's your cousin your friend even if they're doing n4 uh, please share it and also if you have guys that are still in high school that are doing uh, pure maths and physical sciences please share the channel as i also post uh, and offer uh, uh, tuitions or tutorials for those subjects uh, maths pure maths and uh, physical sciences grade 10 to grade 12 right so uh, thank you guys for that in advance uh, so in this video i'm just going to explain what are frame structures right so guys when it comes to frame structures uh the uh the the calculations to this is kind of uh, it's interesting i wouldn't say it's hard it's just interesting and uh that's why i, oh, I say subscribe because i'll be explaining in detail right because how they are teaching because i i also went through this and i know that uh, the lecturers are not clear at sometimes and you need someone who can you know edify your understanding even the textbooks sometimes they are mistakes even when you do question papers you also notice that the memos are not giving you the correct uh, you know the correct answers like they are confusing you what they what you're being taught and what you're seeing in the memo is not the same thing right so uh, i've heard that the reason why they make the memos uh to be that way is because uh there's not so much security you know in the tvet colleges and private colleges when it comes to writing these exams you know uh people can just uh, ask for the toilet and have the phone there and go through the memo you know because they don't have a lot of papers so the memos they're taking from previous questions and then so you, you get uh, you guys get what i mean so yeah uh back to the main purpose of this video is just to introduce uh, introduce what are frame structures and what we are all about you know what is going on in this topic right so when we say frame structures we are talking about a roof trust uh, basically the roof truss right and as you can see this is what i have here i have literally uh, a roof uh, truss okay so guys when we have these uh, this is a roof truss though it's not complete you know we are used to uh the one that has a lot of uh you know so if you have a roof truss uh, like this you know we we are used to one that has a lot of that uh, 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 the ones that have uh diagonal struts and so forth right so this one was just uh for me to explain because i can see i need something that is happening over here right we can see that this can be our loads right so a, a roof truss guys is just a roof uh a roof truss <laughs> it's just a roof truss it's a it's a it's a member you know it's a it's a member in the construction that we use to hold our our roof right we use this to hold our roofs so yeah uh from n4 uh, we got to know uh what these members are we got to know that these are what we call the rafts and then this is what we call the tie beam right as you can see uh, the horizontal members that are running through uh, we call these the tie beams and then we call these ones our rafts right these are our rafts and the entire thing right the entire thing is what we call a roof truss i mean a raft or a rafter okay and then here you have a collar tie and then you have a ridge right and then okay so guys when we have a roof truss the roof truss is in between or the roof truss is uh, being held by a load right is being held by these uh, vertical members they are called loads okay so these members are what we call loads and then in the diagrams in n5 uh, we've seen that they do they go up like that right like they move upwards right uh, this is something that we've seen and then so yeah guys uh, we will discuss more on the diagrams as we move on okay so what i just wanted to point out was that uh, when we taking when we dealing with the roof trusses uh, it is very important that uh, we know what is happening right it's very important that we know uh why we are doing so many calculations so as you can see we will have a point over here 
and then you know we have these points and these different points it depends with the with the diagram okay so what a frame structure is is just a structure that is made up of rigid par uh, rigid parts uh, also known as members right we can also call those members uh, which are joined together by uh, which are joined together actually uh, to form a what we call a, a form of uh, framework because we have different members and then now we have like a form a framework i mean okay so yeah guys and then uh when we have this member here okay uh, when we have this member here uh, what we need to keep in mind is that when we have this we need to know that a frame right a frame or a a, a framework right or a frame structure uh we need to know that it is being held right and is it it's there to hold the roof right the the tiles whether whatever it is that it is on top the the uh, the roof truss the roof structure or the frame structure has to be able to withstand those loads so it can be either the the weight of the roof covering uh the rainwater uh the wind you know it also has to to withstand the wind uh in the different weather conditions and also whether there's temperature so it, 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 it has to be able to withstand uh those different uh pressures okay so guys we have a tie beam right so a tie goes under different so these are the two different uh, uh pressures that the roof structures go under uh they go under what we call tension right so there's tension okay there's tension right so there's tension and then there's what we call compression right there's what we call compression okay we have tension and compression so uh we the the ties right the tie the tie beams undergo tension Right, the ties under the tie beams undergo tension, and this is how we we demonstrate anything that is undergoing tension. So if it's going under tension, it means that it's being pulled. I mean, it's being pulled apart, right? So our arrows to indicate tension will be going inside, right? So it's like the opposing the motion, the opposing the tension. Tension is being pulled, but then the arrows to show that uh, tension is happening, the arrows point inwards. So that's how I want you to remember it tie right so tie beam as you can see tie beam tie beam okay as you can see a tie beam okay uh, a tie beam undergoes tension so how would you know you will look at the tension right tension for tie uh tension for tie beam t for tension also for tie beam right and what happens during tension tension uh is being pulled out right tension means being pulled out so how do you uh counter tension uh, you draw it inside, right? You uh, pull it uh, inside. You compress it, in other words, right? But compression is a different word. So tension, this is how you show the arrows, right? Pointing inwards. And then compre uh, compression is a different story. So let's move on to compression. Uh, compression. So I said tie beams undergo compression. I mean, sorry, tie beams undergo tension. And then... Uh, these are uh, the struts right these are what we call the uh, not these yes these are what we call the struts and then we can call this one a rafter but a rafter can also uh, be seen as a strut okay but now what i mean is that this is how do you remember the forces or what the force that a rafter usually experience is compression right compression as i wrote there it's compression and this is this can be our usual rafter but i'll draw it like this uh, right or a strut or a rafter rafter or a strut right so this rafter undergoes compression right so it's a strut right a strut okay. it undergoes compression how would you know that compression goes with struts compression has two w two s there and also this one you can also take the s and say s for compre uh, for compression right but now compression means that it's being pushed inside isn't it compression means that it's being uh, compressed is being pushed down let me say it's being pushed down right compression means it's being pushed down that is what compression is but now how do you uh encounter or how do you counter I don't, the, uh, yeah so how do you do that like how do you oppose ten uh how do you oppose compression well it's easy you pull the, the member or whatever it is outward so these are the arrows to indicate uh, that a member is a is a strut or is a compression so this is for a strut it undergoes uh, compression as you can see right 
and then what goes under tension uh, under tension so let me just show you guys tension uh, would be inwards so the forces will be pointing inwards like this like this right so this is tension so you can say tie tie beam right and what is it going under it is going under tension right tension is probably going outwards but then how do you uh, oppose this you draw it inside you pull it inside so guys this is what you just need to know uh this will become important later on in the video but for now this is just uh the basics that you need to know you know to just have uh, an overview of what is happening uh what is happening in uh, this uh, type of question because uh we will have to find to calculate so basically uh, what will be required to do is to do the calculation of the forces that each member is is able to withstand right the forces that each for this structure to be stable for construction i mean for for the building to be safe this uh, structure has to withstand uh, a certain load so we just need to know uh how much is each load how, how much is each uh member able to withstand right and you will need these arrows so there will be two methods uh, for us to determine the forces uh they can there will be an analytical method analytical right there'll be an analytical method method right which is not it's not asked very often you know usually they ask you to use so there's an analytical and then there's a there's a graphical right there's an analytical then there's a graphical graphical method right graphical method guys so when it comes to analytical and graphical uh, what you just need to know is that analytical is the one that needs you to do calculations it's like uh, if you did pure maths analytical yeah basically if you did maths you would know that analytical uh is when you're using calculations you know to find uh to find the distances you know between two points and, and etc right so analytical method is the one that is going to be dealing with calculations and then the graphical method is the one that is going to require you to bring in the drawing board and draw to determine the magnitude of the forces that uh, each member will be able to withstand right so usually in some exams as i've seen in the past papers they can ask you to uh what they can do is they can ask you to use either the analytical or the graphical method i prefer the analytical method because i like you know calculations i don't like drawing that much right so yeah the graphical method as well sometimes they can also ask you to do the graphical method only so you need to know both and they can also ask you to do the analytical method only and you also need to know right so you just need to know both guys uh so yeah you just need to know both in this video in the upcoming video i'm going to be uh doing a question right doing a question on the analytical method because the question that i found was asking us to do an analytical method only